हेलो एवरीवन आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू दी लेक्चर सीरीज ऑन एडवांस बिजनेस डिसीजन सपोर्ट सिस्टम्स एंड आई एम प्रबल प्रताप सिंह फ्रॉम आईआईटी कानपुर वी आर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द इम्प्लीमेंटेशन एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ डिसीजन सपोर्ट सिस्टम्स यूजिंग पाइथन सो एज यू ऑल नो टिल नाउ वी हैव कवर्ड द एलिमेंट्स एंड क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ प्रोग्रामिंग लैंग्वेजेस एंड डिस्कस्ड वॉट इज पाइथन प्रोग्रामिंग लैंग्वेज नेक्स्ट वी ऑल्सो क्रिएटेड आर डेवलपमेंट एनवायरमेंट यूजिंग द पाइथन executable file downloaded from its official site and we created our development environment on windows so today we will be discussing the data types in python so we already discussed few things about data types so moving to our next data type that is strings which is the most common type of data type the very first special thing about strings is that strings are a kind of sequence data types so what are the sequence data types so we until now we have seen that if we are defining a variable let us say a is equal to 40 so the memory is storing one particular value in a particular location but what happens if we need to store multiple values in a sequential order like 40 then 20 then 30 so let us say that how many kind of fruits are available in a particular warehouse so let us say in the first warehouse there are 40 fruits in the second there are only 20 kinds in the third warehouse there is 30 so this can be stored in a particular memory location and this will become a sequential data type so strings also are classified as a sequential data type instead of using numbers they are using characters to store in sequences so these are nothing but collection of single or multiple characters so here we can see on the right that a single character string can look like this here we are only using a particular character this can be a b c or anything and we are storing it in a variable string1 str1 so if again i am repeating that if we will write here it as one str then this will not be a valid variable but str1 is a valid variable name the next thing is multi character string which can be written as here so this complete str2 is a single variable that is holding a b c d space e f g h right and to define a particular character as a string in python we will use single quotes or double quotes or triple quotes so single quote and double quotes are interchangeable if you are using single quote to start a string then you need to end the single quote to end the string if you mix and match these two quotes like if you start with double quote and end with single quote then this will be a syntax error so let me write this as well python identifies text inside a quote quote can be single double triple as a string we can use triple quotes to create multi line strings so we can see this in our environment like to create a multi line string so we have seen that a single line comment is like this this is a comment now to create multiple line comments we can use second comment or you can write 
third comment otherwise what you can do is you start with a triple quote and remove these so this is a valid multi line string and the interpreter will not throw an error here again uh, let us define a sing simple string str1 is equal to single quote a so if you run this it stores the interpreter now stores str1 as a string and you can check the type of this variable using the type function str1 and it shows that it is using a class string now if you write string str1 is equal to open with a single quote right abc and close it with a double quote so this is a syntax error here unterminated string literal so the interpreter is saying that you started it with a single quote but you have not yet terminated it so if you just change the above thing with a single quote now this is a valid string so you can see the value of str1 what holds is abc with a double quote so this whole abc and double quote is the value of this variable str1 now i have already shown you that using type function we can see that the variables are that string variables or objects of class string str which confirms that everything is an object in python the last thing about strings is that we can use special special characters like slash n or slash t these are the escape sequences to insert new lines or tab characters that is white spaces in a string so here we can see this string 4 it is using this tab character slash t and slash n so what happens is slash t will be a tab character so after this tab there will be a blank space and then a and d will start and here after line space then a new line will start so we can check this how the interpreter will print the statement when i ran the above statement using shift plus enter the interpreter says that at this slash t is missing from this output why because slash t was interpreted as a tab character here so there is a large gap between tab and character similarly new line and character should be on the same line but after new line we have inputted a slash n character so that is why the interpreter move to the next line so this is how you can use you can customize your output using print statements also uh, i have shown you in the presentation that we can 
use f strings these are f strings to use a variable a dynamic variable into a string so that we can dynamically provide a output to the screen when the programmer wants so let's say the current value of variable r is and i'll use tab character slash t and open and close curly braces and then write the variable name here where underscore r so to use where underscore r we first need to define it so let us say where underscore r has a value of 24 so we first run where underscore r as 24 now we write this so what happens in this print statement is after variable r is a uh, colon slash t will be will provide a tab character and then we should get the value of where r the value stored in where r as a output to this string so let us print this so here it is showing that the current value of variable r is 24 now if i change the value of where r in my interpreter as 48 and then again run this command so now it will print current value of variable r is 48 so where this thing will be useful is when if you want to check the value of a particular variable throughout its computation during the progression of the of your code and you want to check whether the value of variable is changing as per your computation or not you can create these kind of print statements although you should use logging statements for these but that will be an advanced stage so before that we can use these kind of print statements to check whether your computation is going well or not so let us move further so until now we have defined strings and saw how to create different kinds of print statements using strings but strings have since string is an object and a class as we will see in the advanced lectures of this python programming that class has data and methods inside it so every object has data and associated methods with it so since string is an object so string will also have this kind of behavior so strings will have predefined methods here so some of the most used methods in strings are we can use find to search inside a string so let us see this as an example here we are defining a new string which is month is august and year is 2023 now we can either find a single character s or we can find a complete word like year so the output of this first statement will be the location of the first occurrence of s in this string and similarly for the complete word if the word exist in this then the interpreter will give you the output of the first occurrence of the location of the word year so we can see this here we will create another section by writing a new comment string methods and save the file and now create year 1 now we will find the occurrence of s character so it is showing 11 so what this 11 hold is 
as i have told you in earlier lectures that the indexing starts with zero in python and now we know that a string is a sequence data type so the indexing will start from zero so the t in the memory location it is not stored in the first location it is stored in the zeroth location so counting from here the t is at the zeroth location h is at the first location so 0 1 2 the space is also holding a position so 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 so s is at the 11th position in the memory so this is what this find method is showing that the first occurrence of s is at 11th now similarly we can find the location of year if it is available in the string so it is showing 24 so until s it was 11 then 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 th so wherever the word year starts it will give you the the location of the first character of that word so it is giving the output as 24 so let us save the script the next useful method is count we can use count to count the occurrence of a particular string so here we can see that in our string there are two is is so we can use a count method to find the number of occurrences of the word is and it should give the output as 2 for year it should give the output as 1 so let us see so it is showing 2 and similarly for the word year str underscore 1 dot count year so it is only 1 so you can use any word any character using this count method next useful method is capitalize you can use capitalize to make the text in capital case so these kind of methods are useful when we are trying to change the cases of our long text so this looks trivial for short strings but let's say you are changing the whole text of a particular ebook so you can use this to change a huge amount of text in that complete ebook and see whether if you need to capitalize all the sentences then just use this single function and it will do the job similarly let's say if you have a complete paragraph and you want to change it into upper case that is in all caps so you can use this method upper so it will what it will do is it will change the complete text into upper case next thing is you can use title method to create the text in title case so title case is let's say uh, we have a string world of wonders so this is not in title case right now so title case will be the first character of every word should be in capital letters so this function will do it the next useful thing is we can also check whether the string contains alphabets 
alpha numeric text or only digits using functions like is alpha is al n u m or is digit now this is very crucial when we are taking the input from users so this we can see with a example i have also written this example here so you can see that we can use this input function that is predefined in python to get some input from the user and user can do anything while providing the input it can provide you just the number just the text or the mixture of both and it doesn't matter what you want from the user user can provide anything so you want to first check whether user has given the correct input or not so to do that we can use these kinds of methods in strings so let us see how this works so we can create a new variable user underscore input and we will use the predefined input method and this input method we can use just like that without putting any string inside it or we can create a string so that user will see the string while giving the input so let us say that we want a digit input from the user so we can ask for enter the age in numbers slash t now the user should give an input in numbers but what if the user is not giving it in numbers so we can first run this statement so as soon as we run this statement the interpreter has seen that there is an uh, string provided inside the input with a slash t character so it has created a tab character here and is asking for a input after the tab character so i can write 30 which is not a correct input but user can do that so we can see what user input variable holds user underscore input so it holds a string but we in words but we needed a number so when you are creating a long form of code so you have not the capability to check all these things by going to the interpreter and writing all this stuff so what happens is you can use the pre built functions like uh, user input dot now these are all the methods that are available so we can use is digit and run this so it is showing false here so python is saying that this input does not contain numbers it contains something else so let us run this line again and give it a correct input as 30 here 30 and now run this check method again and now it is showing true so this is how we can use these things so let us say if the user has given something very different 30 30 both in numbers and in words so this is a alpha numeric text and we can also check this whether the string contains an alpha numeric text or not so we used here the method is lnum is alpha numeric and it is showing true so this is how these string methods are useful so we can also use replace
to find and replace the provided substring so we all have done it at least once in our life that we used excel and we or in microsoft word that we need to find something and then replace it in the whole document so python can also do it with this replace method so here i have shown you an example like in this string there is this end and i want to replace it with this character m percent so i will just write str1 dot replace the thing that i need to find and the final thing that i want to replace it with so i'll first provide the end and then the m percent operator and it will do the job so we can see this quickly so let us first check whether our string contains this statement or yes now we can write str1 dot replace a and d and replace it with m percent character so you can see here that our string has been changed and end is replaced by the m percent character but keep in mind that when we are using these methods so these are not overwriting the string so str1 is still the same in the memory but the output of this operation is here it has not yet overwritten the original string so some methods in some kind some different data types can overwrite things but this replace method is not that kind so we will also look those methods that can replace things in the original string or list or other kind of data types the other method is we can use split to divide a string based on a particular character or string in the available text so here i have shown you the example that let us say this complete sentence contains two different sub sentences like month is august and year is 2023 so what if we want to divide this complete string into two on the basis of this end so we can use the split function and provide this end as a string then it will create a new data type we are using strings here but it will create a new data type which is list and it will store the first sub sentence and the second sub sentence in the list so we can see here and it will also be an introduction to a list str1 dot split on the basis of string a and d so you can see here that our complete string is has been split into the month is august and the other one is space year is 2023 so why this these two spaces because when we wrote our string above uh string so the python used this end and it gave as a output this complete string including this space character similarly this space character is included in the second substring and this is the notation of a list with a square bracket a square bracket and a comma delimits different quantities or different elements of a list so this list has two elements similarly we have also this one useful function to check the length of string so what if we need to find the length of a particular paragraph or text or complete book so we can use this simple function len str_1 
and it is showing that it contains 36 characters. So this is also a useful function which we will use in our further coding. One more useful function is strip. Use strip to remove the white spaces from the string. So, what are these white spaces? So, let me show you here that when we are running this uh, split command, it is giving these two substrings and this has a white space. So, we can remove it using the strip command. So, let me store this into a variable. and I can get the first element of this list using the square notation and at the 0th index. So, it is showing me that at the 0th index of the list it contains this string. Now, I can use since this is a string. So, I can use the method strip and it has removed the white space from it. So, this is how we can use these things. So, there are many more string methods, but these are some of those that are very useful and we will use and the programmers also use this very frequently. So, moving on to our next concept that is slicing in Python. So, this is useful since we are talking about sequential data types. So, sequence data types f like containers that can store multiple values in a deterministic order. So, let us understand this statement. So, what happens is I have already shown you that uh, if we are using a single variable then it is storing then it gets stored in a single location in memory. Let us say this is a container and it stores 40. Now, sequential data types has this kind of array like behavior which can store multiple quantities sequentially. So, the first location stores 40 second may store 50, third store 7, 4, 3 like this. So, storage is ok, but how to retrieve or modify these things. So, what python developers did, they configured it in the memory using this deterministic order. So, what they say is that any sequential data type will start its location using the 0th index. So, the first location is 0, second is 1 third is 2, similarly 3 and 4. So, this sequential data type which contains only integers has the address of the first value at 0, then 1, 2, 3 and 4. So, these are like containers that can store multiple values in a deterministic order. So, whenever you want to retrieve the seventh value, you will say that the name of this container, let us say b d and you will ask the interpreter to go to this variable bd and search at the second location what is the value. This second location is actually 3, but as per the python interpreter it is 2 and then retrieve that value. So, interpreter will give you the output as 7, right. So, string is 1 out of many sequence types available in python and programmers often need to retrieve or modify particular parts 
of sequences which is which comes under the slicing feature so either a programmer wants a single value or it can also ask for a series of values from 1 and going until the third location so this is getting a slice from this sequential data type and the interpreter will provide these three values 57 and 4 so we will learn here how to extract or retrieve this kind of series of values from a sequential data type what is the correct syntax for that so let me again mention this that a sequence container assigns integer index to each unit in the sequence starting from 0 now let us see the syntax of the slicing so let us say that we have a variable with the name where underscore name then we will use the square brackets we will open the square bracket then we will write the start index which is nothing but this integer value starting from 0 until the length of the sequence you can use any one of it then you will use a colon operator after that you will write the end index after that one more optional parameter is to provide the step so what happens is this step this step can skips some values while counting in the sequential data type so let us say we provide a step of 2 starting from 0 so what happens is that interpreter will give first value as 40 then it will skip two values and give the second value as 4 and since there are no more values so it will stop here so this kind of slicing with step of 2 will only provide two values if we start from 0 so we can see this in our visual studio code by creating a new section so we have our string available str underscore one sorry str underscore one and uh, we can use the slicing here as well so let us say str underscore one open the bracket and write starting from first we need to check until the seventh value as the end index since step is a optional parameter we can skip it also so what it will do is it will go to the first index and until the last seventh index it will print all the values and here let us see 0th is t so it skipped that after that h e 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so the last value that is the end index is not included in the slicing operator in python so that is why the t which is at the seventh location will not get printed now you can also use this with a step command of 2 so now what we are saying is skip two values by default it was skipping nothing so the, here it will say the first value is h then it will skip e and uh, space character and then it will give m and similarly it will move forward so let us see the output h and o after that the string completed at the seventh location so there are only two strings sorry it created an output with three characters the first is h the other is the space character 
after escaping the two values the second value and then the o so now let us move to our next data type list which is a general purpose array there are no arrays in python but we call them list here they provide a similar functionality so these variables can store single data or multiple data multiple kind of data type so it can store can store mixed data types as well so the first sequence data type we saw was string but string only includes characters here we can include characters numbers even list as well inside list that we call them as nested list so we can use mixed data types in strings which makes it general purpose and we can create an empty list using the list method list method or we can initialize a new list using square brackets so this we can see here that we are generating a new list by using just this list method and after that we can also initialize a different list by using these square brackets and this string contains a number a string a variable itself which we have defined earlier and it can also do inline computations like this so 2 into 7 will be stored as 14 when the interpreter will run this code so nesting of list is also possible by storing a list inside a list so the example for this is here the nest list uh, variable will contain an empty list which we defined here then the first list which we defined here and these two numbers 45 and 22 so this list contains number data type an empty list and a list as well this list contains strings so this is called nesting of list and this variable holds different kinds of data types in itself and the numbering starts here as 0 1 2 3 now since this is again a list so the next numbering starts from at the third we start again with a square bracket and the numbering starts from 0 1 for this abc then 2 for this string two variable and 3 for 2 into 7 14 so this is how it works now we can see the example of this quickly so let us first define empty list equals list we can run this one by one so now our interpreter 
has ran all the three commands and we have these three kind of list in our memory so we can print this like first list and we can assess the different kinds of elements using the square notation as we have discussed earlier like first since there are three numbers but the indexing starts from zero so the first value is available at the zero location so zero one two so to get the string value from the list we will write one here okay i have not used the correct name of the list variable first list so it is giving the output as abc now let us see what next list contains so this contains an empty list then two number data types and the other list so to assess abc again from this nested list we will write nest list square bracket and we will first give the location of the first degree of the locations available in this nest list so that is zero location for this empty list 1 2 and at the third location the other list is available so we will go to the third location first then we will close the square brackets and then we will again start a new square bracket to assess the location of abc in the second list and we have already seen that this is available at 0 and 1 first location so this also gives abc so to assess nested list we use these kind of multiple square notations to assess a particular element from the nest list so the next important thing is list is a mutable data type that is it can add delete modify the contents of a list after initializing it so this list sequence data type is a mutable data type it can modify anything in the list but the string data type which we have seen earlier strings are immutable so we can look at a example of this here so let us say that the mission name is chandrayaan and we want to change the last n to the capital n so the first thing which we should know is that we can also in the last slide i have shown you that we can initialize sequence data type and then start the indexing from zero but what if a programmer wants to assess the last location of the data contained in a sequence data type so to do that python programmers defined that we can also assess the last location by using the negative sequencing so negative sequencing does not start with zero from the right it starts from minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 minus 4 minus 5 so we can see here that to assess this last n we can use mission underscore name and square notations with the minus n and to override that value we can use this capital n as a string so let us see this and we will provide a new section here with immutability and let us initialize our variable mission name equals chandrayaan since it is a sequence data type so we can assess the last location by using minus indexing and it will provide you the last character as n now to override this character in string you can 
say that assign this n character as a capital n but this should throw the interpreter should throw an error here like this type error string object does not support item assignment why because strings are immutable but let us say we want to change the this value in nest list 22 to 44 so we can do this let us first check what nest list contains so it contains the same things until now since we have not modified anything so nest list and assess this 22 location as 01 so it the value 22 is available at the first location at the index 1 so to override this we just need to assign it as 44 now there are no errors so let us again check nest list now it has been overwritten with 44 so this way you can mutate a list but cannot mutate a string you can also mutate this same location with a string and it will work as well so now the same thing stores a string so this is how a string can handles different kinds of data types and that is why we usually call it a general purpose data type now similar to the other sequence data types like string list also contains its own methods so we can use append method to add an element at the end of the list we can also use insert method to add an element at a specified location so you may ask both of these methods are adding something to a list that a user has defined so what is the difference now the difference here is at a specified location or at the end of the list so you can see here that we have defined a new list named as social apps and it contains these different kinds of social applications available so if we use the append method then this newly available threads social application will be appended to the end of the list however if we insert at a particular location that is here the programmer is providing at the index location 2 we should insert this string mastodon so the list will contain this at the location 2 so we can quickly see we will first initialize our variable by providing the values so now we can check the difference between append and insert method so social apps dot append we can append threads and it should go to the end of the list so let us see social now you can see that threads is available at the end and as i have already told you that in strings there are some functions there are some methods that uh, overwrite the contents or there are some methods that do not overwrite the contents similarly in list also 
this method will override the content this will not just provide you a new output it has overwritten our original parent list now use the insert method and see the facebook is available at the zeroth location the next is 1 2 so we need to provide this new string at the second location so we will first give the location as 2 and then we will provide our string which is mastodon and this will insert the this string before instagram so let us see again what happened so you can see that at the second location 0 12 the mastodon string is available before instagram so next important method available in list is we can use pop method to remove the element from the end of the list so by default it will remove from the end but if you want to remove a particular element then we can also specify the location also we can use extend to add any kind of iterable iterable is nothing but sequence data types like list or we will see dictionaries as well in our further lectures iterable to a list we can also use sort to sort the list in a particular order and this sort method has two arguments with it like reverse and key so what reverse do is it will if you it is a bool means it is a binary uh, argument it will be either true or false so if true it will sort the complete list in a reverse order similarly if we are using a key then we can provide a function which we will discuss in our further lectures how to write a function and how to return values from it and if it returns some values based on those outputs the sort method can sort the complete list on the returned output from that function okay so we can also see this on our code so we can use the pop method to first see what it performs by default social apps dot pop if there is a method then it should use a opening and closing parenthesis so let us run so it printed the last value from the list and should have removed from the container that is list so let us see whether it has removed or not that is whether it has overwritten the values or not so now you can see that the interpreter does not contain threads in its original list but what if we want to remove a particular value at a particular location using the pop method so we can do that as well social apps dot pop and provide the particular location like 2 where we inserted mastodon earlier and every time we use pop it will always provide the return output that has been removed from the list so we can see here that earlier it showed threads now it is showing mastodon and we can check whether it has removed or not so now you can see that there is no mastodon in the list similarly we can extend this list by using the extend function using the extend method social apps dot extend and 
earlier we have a nested list so we can use that nest list here and let us run this and see what happened social apps so now our original social apps list has been extended with a new list nested list which we used earlier and you can see after this google plus string we have the empty list which was available in nested list then def then 45 and other another list which was contained in the nested list so this way we can extend a complete a list with another list the last thing which we discussed is to sort so if we try to run this again social apps original social apps and then try to sort this with default input so now these are following a particular alphabetical sorting method in ascending order like f facebook is the first google plus is the next f g i w x but originally it was something different f then x then instagram then whatsapp then google plus so this way what if if we want to provide this sorting order in reverse so we can use dot sort the argument reverse equals true and then it should sort this in reverse order so now you can see the last element earlier x has become the first then whatsapp then instagram google plus and facebook so these are some of the major data types that python contains and we will discuss further data types like dictionaries sets tuples in the upcoming lectures but before that to understand few very beautiful characteristics of the list and other data types we need to first learn what are the control flow statements what are the looping statements and other things in python so that we can use uh, features like list comprehensions and other things so in the next lecture we will discuss these control statements first and then we will complete our data types like dictionaries and other available data types in python so thank you very much i hope you are practicing all these things in your development environment as well if you find any difficulties please reach out us to in forums and we'll help you out thank you